when Sussex began in the early 60s, it was trying to break all kinds of molds. At the same time, uh, a generous philanthropist called Sidney Caffin offered a very large sum of money uh, to build a chapel and to endow a chaplaincy. One of the reasons this became very interesting was because Basil Spence, who was building the university, had just built a huge cathedral. Uh, it was Coventry Cathedral. Uh, so the man who just built this extraordinary, much admired cathedral was building the university. And when he was invited to build a new chapel, many of the ideas he had over from Coventry Cathedral he'd not been able to use. He wanted to put into the chapel here. But it was vetoed by uh, many of the founding fathers who said there won't be any religion at Sussex. A compromise was reached. <laughs> and, and the compromise was that if, if the chapel was built along the models of, of um, the most benign spirituality uh, in their view that existed, which was the Quaker spirituality, then it had no outside religious symbols. It wasn't built in the form of a crucifix, but instead of a circle, it was called a meeting house and not a chaplaincy. And if the chaplain who was appointed w earned his living as a working academic, then the harm that he could do would be much reduced because he would be too intelligent to do too much harm and also too busy. The key thing about the concept was that it wasn't called the chapel, you know, that, that it was it was seen to be a place of quiet that would be appropriate for a wide range of, of religious practice and that the ground floor should not have any specific religious connotations other than the fact that chaplains would have their offices there. The idea actually was that because the funds were quite limited, was to produce a powerful statement on very limited resources, and the form of it was dictated by the disposition of the trees, where we analysed the trees and their tree roots to determine where the building could safely be sited without damaging the trees, and where, nevertheless, it would be a powerful statement. It was incredibly economic, using these concrete blocks, which were very cheap to cast, and just stack them up you know, like children's Lego. And then, of course, came the roof form, which was like a slight like Sussex Kentish look, almost like an oast house. It was quite interesting because, in fact, that is a, in distinct contrast to the walls, which are gross, heavy lumps of concrete. The roof is, is the thinnest possible shell. It's like an eggshell and very, very finely engineered.